Hey everyone, the 6.5 is back. We are on the road here at Computex 2024 in Taipei. We are doing a series of conversations with Qualcomm, an exclusive series, as this has been a big week for Qualcomm around the launch of Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite, as well as the Copilot Plus PC. And this particular conversation hits that topic on the nail with someone that's been on our show many times before. We've got Kadar Kondap. Kadar is the SVP and GM of Compute and Gaming at Qualcomm. And he's been a regular, Ryan. We've had him a number of times on the 6.5, although mm -hmm. you, and I together, this may be the first this time that new. we have the this chance. Kadar, welcome to the show, welcome to Taipei. What a week, how are you doing, my friend? Doing good, thanks Dan, thanks Ryan, thanks for having me on. Exciting times ahead for us. Yeah, and you mentioned it's a, it's a big week. I would say hey. it's been a big month, maybe the whole year, really, for you guys, uh, ever since the, the release of the X Elite branding kind of back at the Snapdragon Summit. Congratulations. Very cool. One thing I've been curious about is X Elite's a good product, it's a great product, it's been getting a ton of attention. There were previous iterations of Windows on Snapdragon. I just want to curious, curious like, what were the learnings and, and, and how did that impact and influence what we end up with today? You know, it, uh, as you said earlier, uh, this is a big pivotal moment for us. I think what's happened over the last several years, I'd say, uh, we're preparing us for this moment. Uh, you saw, uh, the announcements for Microsoft, uh, it all was honestly a testament to uh, the kind of platform that we have, the kind of work we've done in partnership with them. Um, I'd say a lot of the key learnings that we've been able to do over the years is, uh, you know, we have an incredible platform that we've not had before. Uh, more specifically, the X Elite is uh, uh, best in class in terms of its uh, performance in multiple ways. And uh, you look at performance per watt leadership, you look at uh, the custom Qualcomm Orion CPU, uh, you look at the graphics performance that is incredibly good and more so obviously what we celebrated a lot was the NPU and obviously it's a bet that we've uh, we've taken for many years. It wasn't just that we uh, decided on adding an NPU in this platform. We've been doing this for generations. It's almost like seven years now since we've had an NPU. So we've been preparing for this moment for many years. Yeah, and it's been a big moment. And of course, part of the Qualcomm story has been very diversification centric, whether it's been moving into IoT, you guys won that RF front end market. It became really, really important and pivotal sure. in the growth of the company. Automotive, uh, there's been a number of great uh, narratives out there. And the overall narrative was that Qualcomm set out to diversify and in many ways has executed. The market has given a, a pretty good sign that it's appreciating that with the recent moves. And of course, now wanting to be in on the AI trend and be in this PC trend as, as well, Kadar. But like, you know, the PC market's tough. You know, it's not, it wasn't a guarantee. There was a number of reasons to think it may be hard to break in. With, with Microsoft giving you the big vote of confidence, of course, at Build, the, the OEMs picking and choosing many designs, your aspirations must be growing. Can you talk a little bit about kind of how that's evolving and what does Qualcomm see as its road to growth and market? I mean, is the sky the limit? Yeah. Great question, Dan. I think for us, you know, when you, as you said rightfully, uh, when we enter a new market or when we try to go into uh, adjacent businesses and stuff, uh, we realize that this is a long investment. This is not a short-term thing. Uh, we do realize that the investments we make sometimes bear fruit over many, many years. And so as you can see, uh, you know, with the X Elite and the Plus, our, our growth is obviously, our expansion plans are to grow the market as much as we can. We want to be able to offer the best uh, Copilot Plus next generation AI PCs to as many consumers as we can. So the reason why we launch both the X Elite and the Plus concurrently or close enough is uh, due to the fact that we want all these consumers to be able to get access to these new uh, use cases that we're talking about. More specifically, I think you saw some of the use cases that uh, Microsoft talked about. Uh, specifically those total recall and you know a bunch of stuff. We've also shown some pretty incredible uh, ISV partnerships that have shown some uh, really cool apps. And once you start to see how the NPU shines in its glory with uh, running stuff on a dedicated hardware engine and the impact that it has in, on battery life and stuff, it's awesome. So our intent as you look at aspiration and stuff is to make sure that uh, we can get to as many of the PC users and get to as many people with uh, giving them a super compelling uh, Windows platform to play with. I think those aspirations are, are, are excellent. One, one of the things that I'm curious about also is, this is a very different market than Qualcomm's used to playing it, right? Those smartphones is what Qualcomm was known for in the past. 
you're now trying to get into a, a market and segment that works very differently. There's channel, there's retail, you know, entrenched two competitors in this space. What's it been like trying to push your way in and, and, and showcase the product and get the credit that, that uh, you think the X Elite deserves? You know, Ryan, in, in some ways, uh, you said this is different, but in many ways, this is actually the same. Uh, when we were in the phone space, we come from the mobile legacy. And uh, for us, as we think of even little things, architecture, how we're designing our course, how we're designing the entire platform, the choice that we make with respect to components, they're always biased towards making sure we're focused on power as a number one goal. So using that, you know, obviously as you know, mobile and phones and PCs are mobile platforms, everybody wants to carry them around. Um, any and every market research that you do will show you that the number one feedback from everybody is that battery life is the most important thing that matters. So uh, in many ways, it's actually just very easy for us to be able to migrate from a mobile uh, based uh, ecosystem to now a uh, compute or PC based ecosystem. So the way I think about it is we've been able to innovate in uh, phones, right? Right from whether it is, uh, if you look at uh, cameras and phones, uh, you know, we've evolved over time, right? From, um, you know, now you have phone cameras that are 200 megapixels. For what it's worth, they've replaced uh, DSLRs for the most part. Um, you even think about GPS for that matter, right? I remember a few uh, years ago where, you know, you'd be in a dense uh, downtown area and you won't have uh, a GPS signal on your phone. And, you know, we've been able to innovate, obviously, with uh, triangulating multiple satellites and stuff. So for us, a lot of that goodness. Uh, the reason why we keep saying this is PC Reborn is really it is uh, something that's incredible. And at Qualcomm, we believe in innovation. So we're obviously a very technology-biased uh, company. We want to drive the industry towards innovation and give as many consumers uh, a good reason to be able to adopt this new PC. I'll add one more thing. I think uh, Dan's anxious to say something. But I think uh, as you were saying Always. something... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to your question about uh, you know, uh, just the market being different, yeah. uh, I think the channel is different. There's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. It's a very... Uh, phones being carrier-centric versus uh, PCs being retailer in the consumer space and then uh, commercial and enterprise and pretty almost pretty equal when you think about it. Um, Actually, you I don't know if you saw Best Buy's uh, quote earlier with their CEO, Corey, it was incredible. I mean, uh, she was endorsing stuff and, you know, we're partnering with them uh, to launch uh, PCs on uh, June 18th. They've assorted. Um, you'll almost see, I think, almost every key retailer uh, launching these devices. I think it, uh, we made their life pretty easy by having a really compelling platform for them to be able that to helps. assort. So it helps a lot. Yeah, yeah you're definitely driving a, a paradigm shift is what I would I would say. And like I said, of course, you're expecting meaningful competition to come. They're not going to lay down and just let you take market. But at the same time, that low power, that kind of mobile device like experience um, on your PC has been the paradigm shift where we, you know, like I said, when we first designed phones, it was like, how do we make them more like the PC? Correct. And now we're going 180 degrees Correct. the other way. And that's a software driven thing. That's the software is going to drive that software is going to drive AI. How do you kind of see the software and the development driving this forward, you know, in terms of creating more demand for what you're building? Great question. So, you know, a couple of ways to think about what we're doing with software. One, obviously, uh, it would be amiss if I don't give a shout out to the work Microsoft has done uh, in terms of all of the goodness, right? From whether it is uh, partnering with them on uh, the Copilot Plus experiences, uh, the fact is, uh, you know, they've also announced Prism. Uh, incredible job uh, by Microsoft getting the emulator performance up to a level where it's really, really good. When I think about apps, I think of it in three steps. One, I think the apps, uh, a normal consumer really doesn't understand emulation for what it's worth. So we want the app to just run. And the fact that now there is uh, such an incredible uh, emulator called Prism for Microsoft, the apps will run in an emulated manner with some really good performance. Second, we want the app to run native on the platform. And I think you've heard now uh, so many of these uh, uh, app vendors talk about it. Now you've heard from Google that has ported Chrome native. You've heard from Adobe. They've ported a whole bunch, and they've committed to porting many others. Uh, you've, you've seen DaVinci and Blackmagic and all of these. So there's been a huge number of apps that are already being um, ported native. And then the third step towards this is the apps need to celebrate the silicon. I mean, we have a heterogeneous architecture um, that is super compelling. We've got dedicated C uh, fixed function blocks, right, from whether it is a CPU, a GPU, an NPU, a dedicated camera, video core, uh, audio core. 
we've got even small little NPU sitting inside our audio block that runs in low power. So when you think about what happens with software, these apps celebrate everything with the silicon. And uh, to give more access to developers, uh, Microsoft and us uh, talked about, Microsoft uh, announced this on stage at Build, which is we have the Snapdragon Windows uh, dev box. So we're going to make sure the hardware is available to as many developers as possible. And uh, we also announced the AI Hub. So our intent is multiple fold. You have the apps, you have the ecosystem, and we're making sure there's enough hardware available for them, and the tools such as AI Hub that they can take any of these models that are evolving fast, port it onto our device. So overall, I think software is going to be key, and, and we're going to do everything possible to accelerate that uh, on Snapdragon. I talked earlier about kind of how different the PC market can be. Uh, I, I want to ask you more of a forward-looking question, I guess. You, you've done a great job kind of differentiating how X Elite comes into the market, what its performance characteristics are, uh, um, how it segments itself in the market. How do you maintain that over future generations, right? Because you know the competition's going to come in, they're going to have responses, um, but, but what's kind of, what's your view on how you extend that? Yeah. Look, like I said earlier, we're a technology company. We're going to continue to innovate. Uh, I can't tell you what's, I wish I could tell you what's coming out in the future, but uh, all I'll tell you is it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm very excited about what's coming. Um, let's just say there are, uh, you should keep an eye out. Uh, there are some things that, uh, some fun things you should expect from us soon, and a longer term horizon, obviously we have some incredible stuff coming down the pipe. Yeah, and I know you can only say so much, but look, the wins are going to tell the story. The sell-in has been very good, and we've seen it with the designs and what we've heard from you know, the partners, Lenovo and Dell and HP and others have come out, Samsung, with what they plan to do. The sell-out is going to be seeing people going down the street, you know, walking into a Starbucks cafe and seeing those Snapdragon devices with their coffee, right next to the coffee. That's going to be the win. That's what, of course, we as analysts are looking out for. But what I can say, Kadar, is you've made a lot of progress even from 6 and 12 months ago. You've compelled me as an analyst that you guys can do this in a way that wasn't certain during different parts of this journey. So I want to congratulate you on that. I want to thank you, wish you a great Computex 2024. Good luck with the rest of the announcements and uh, you can be sure we'll be having you back soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this exclusive coverage of Computex and Snapdragon X Elite. We had Kadar Kondap, SVP, GM of Compute and Gaming here. But for you, you got to tune in, subscribe, join us, be part of our community. We appreciate you. But for now, for Ryan Shroud, for myself, I got to go. We'll see you all later.